This cute, fat, little red-breasted nuthatch sure looks like it's finding plenty of food to eat so far this winter. Red-breasted nuthatches uh, consume mostly insects uh, during the summertime, things like caterpillars and spiders that they pick off the tree trunks. But of course, now in the winter, those uh, bugs are gone and they switch to eating seeds. Up north in their natural habitat, there's lots of uh, conifer trees. And uh, so they eat the, the seeds out of uh, pine and spruce cones. And you can often find these guys perched way up the, at the top of, say, a spruce tree, uh, sitting on a, a cone and uh, picking the seeds out. Uh, but we don't have, of course, a lot of uh, pine and spruce trees here in Iowa. So now in the wintertime, they'll visit our feeders where they like suet, sunflowers. But probably their favorite food is uh, a shelled peanut. So uh, if you put some peanuts out, uh, for sure, uh, you've got a pretty good chance maybe of seeing a red-breasted nuthatch around your place this winter. These coral berry berries are really beautiful, uh, bright pink, uh, and uh, still persisting now into the winter, but they probably won't last for much longer. Coral berry is an uncommon uh, plant around here. It's a little bush related to honeysuckle, believe it or not, but it's native and uh, not invasive at all. You'll find it in uh, kind of dry, rocky woodland glades, I'd say. Uh, but uh, it uh, has little pink flowers in the summer. And uh, now those bright kind of almost coral pink flowers, uh, flowers, berries in uh, autumn and uh, persisting into winter if the birds don't get them first. Uh, they are a favorite food for uh, birds like American robins, great catbirds, vireos, uh, cedar waxwings, uh, even chickadees might eat them, uh, and uh, white-tailed deer love them as well. That's another reason that uh, one of its common names is buckbrush. Can you believe these sharp-lobed hepatica leaves are still persisting as we move into the winter season? Hepatica bloomed way back in mid to late March, and that's when the leaves emerged. So they've been around photosynthesizing all spring, summer, fall, and, uh, you know, that's like uh, nine months that uh, they've been alive. And uh, so hepatica is, con the leaves are actually considered uh, evergreen in a way. And as long as we don't have snow on the ground, there's still a little green there. And they're still probably providing uh, sustenance, energy uh, to the root system down there. And uh, they're going to, you know, still be there uh, next spring when the snow melts. And at that time, the sun is going to you know, shine down on those dark leaves. It will warm up uh, the ground underneath a little quicker. And uh, that's how hepatica kind of gets a jump on some of the other spring flowers because those roots warm up quite fast. Uh, again, uh, on a sunny south facing slope in uh, mid to late March.